Hey guys, it's Mr. Dan, and today we're going to talk about a word that y'all probably already think that you know. And it's a word called forgiveness. If you're like me growing up, you're like, yeah, I know how to do that. Somebody says they're sorry, you say I forgive you. Sometimes it's your brother or sister that's done something to you and they say, I'm sorry, and you're like, I forgive you. But you don't really mean it, but you say it because you're supposed to, right? Well, that's not really forgiveness. And today we're gonna talk about why. Um, so, my cat is climbing up the door right now. <laughs> so first we're gonna be in Matthew chapter 18. So in this chapter, Peter, and now what do we know about Peter? He's the guy that walks on water, that cuts off people's ears. He's the one that's always the first to try or say something when everybody else is a little scared too. So Peter comes to Jesus with the question in typical Peter fashion. And he says, Jesus, how many times must I forgive my brother when they do something against me? Seven times? Now, when Peter says seven times, he's actually trying to say an answer that's above what people usually would. In Jewish culture, if you forgave people three times, that was a big deal because people usually did not forgive each other that many times. And if you forgave someone for doing the same thing three times, that was good for them. So Peter was trying to be extra good and he was using seven because it was a number that represented completion. And he said, should I forgive them seven times? Thinking he's gonna think I'm really good for asking this. And Jesus says, no, forgive them 70 times seven. All right, 70 times seven, 490 times. Now Jesus didn't say this number because we have to forgive people exactly 490 times and the 491st time that they do something bad, we don't forgive them anymore. No, he was saying forgive people over and over and over and over again repeatedly and don't stop forgiving people. Well, how do we forgive people and what does that look like? So Jesus went on to tell Peter a parable. Now a parable is a story that's supposed to represent an idea or a bigger picture of how God wants us to act or something that he wants us to realize. And so he tells Peter the story about a guy that owed a king a lot of money. So he owed this king a whole bunch of money. Think about it like in our present day, he owed the king like $10 million, something that he could not pay back because he wasn't a, a rich guy, he was a poor guy. And so the king came to him and he said, since you can't pay your debts, I'm gonna sell you, I'm gonna sell your family, and I'm gonna sell all of your belongings. And the guy pleaded with the king and he said, please, please, please forgive me. I will pay them back. I will do whatever I have to. Just please have mercy on me. Give me some time and I will get your money to you. Now the king did one better. The king says, not only will I have mercy on you, but I'll forgive you of everything you owe me and you don't have to pay me back. Go take your family and live your life. Well, that seemed like a great thing in this guy. He should have been happy and overjoyed and realized that he received something that he didn't deserve. But he goes out and he does something completely unexpected. He goes and he finds a guy that owes him money. And he does, that guy didn't owe him a lot of money. He just owed him a little bit of money. And he goes to him and he says, pay me what you owe me. And he choked him, grabbed him around the throat and said, pay me what you owe me. And the guy pleaded with him and he said, have mercy on me, please, and I will pay you everything. But guess what? Even though this sounded familiar because he just said that to the king and then the king gave, mer gave him mercy and freed him from his debt, he didn't do the same to this guy. He threw the guy in prison and had no mercy on him at all. Well, the other people that already knew what the king had done for him, they reported to the king and they told the king what had happened. Do you think the king was very happy? Absolutely not. So the king took the original guy and he said, you know what, I had said that I forgave you of all those debts, but then you went and you tried to collect on a debt that was even less than what you owed me. And you treated this guy with no mercy. And so he threw him in prison and he tortured and beat him because of what he had done. And Jesus says, so shall God deal with us if we can't forgive people. Meaning God has forgiven us for everything. He's forgiven us of our sins, of every time that we've done anything wrong and we have owed God more than we can ever repay because we can't earn salvation. It's only through Jesus alone. That's not something that we can earn, that God has given us grace through his sacrifice of his son. Yet we go around and we tell people that they owe us stuff. 
you you sinned against me. You're gonna have to earn this back. I, I can't forgive you. But if God can forgive us, can we forgive other people? Of course we should be able to. This meant so much to Jesus and so much to God that in the Bible, it actually says, if you're going to pray and you're going to the temple and you remember in your mind that there's something that you have been angry about towards somebody or something that you just haven't settled with someone that you're in a fight with, before you go and pray at the temple, before you go and do anything in God's house, you need to go and find that person and you need to fix it because God took this very seriously. So guys, before we go to God for anything, we need to make sure that our hearts are right towards everybody else. And that we're not like that guy that's not forgiving people of the very little that they owe us, or the very little that they have sinned against us. That we have forgiven them just like God forgives us, because that's what we're called to do. Now, forgiveness also means forgetting, all right? Not like we get amnesia and we can't remember but it means we don't bring it up again. God does not bring our sins up to us again. That's not how he operates. It says, as far as the east is from the west, so he removes his sins from us. He takes them far away because he loves us. And that's what, what he wants for us, is for us to live a life that is completely free of guilt and shame. So in class, we learned if we are feeling shame or guilt about something, if we're feeling bad for something that we've already asked God's forgiveness for, and we've already repented for, and we've already turned from, that's not from God. That's from the enemy. But guys, if we make other people feel that way for something that we've already told them that we forgive them for, that's no better. We shouldn't be putting people in the cone of shame, okay? So if y'all have seen the movie Up, you know whenever Doug messes up or any of the dogs mess up and up, they get put in the cone of shame, which shows everybody else this bad thing that they've done. If we forgive someone, then that's it. We can't be like, oh, you remember that time that you did that to me? Or yeah, you did this again and you just did that like two times ago and you said you wouldn't do it again, but now you did. No, when we forgive them, we treat them like Jesus does. And that means we can't be bringing it up over and over again. And I know for me, this is something that I've struggled with in my life, especially with siblings, with whoever. I'm like, yeah, like, I forgive you, but if it happens again, mm -mm. nope, that's not our place. We can't say things like that. We have to be like, I forgive you, as Jesus forgave me. In the Bible, Jesus is telling us how to say the Lord's Prayer. And he says, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now listen to this, he says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, meaning forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Now before I thought it was forgive us while we're forgiving, but what if it's forgive us like we're forgiving? What if we're not forgiving people of things very well and we're asking God to do the same for us? We need to make sure that we're doing this right because it's so important. So treat people like Jesus has treated you. And I have a quick little example to show you how powerful God's forgiveness is, okay? So we know that Jesus sometimes is represented with living water. We know that water represents purity and being washed away from all of our sins. So I have this bag of packing peanuts, okay? So say these packing peanuts are gonna represent our sins. All of these things in our life that we have done wrong all of these things that we ourselves need forgiveness for. Maybe we lied, maybe we hit someone, maybe we talked bad about somebody, maybe we knew we were supposed to do something and we didn't do it. That counts as sin too. Not doing the things that we're supposed to do counts as sin, just as much as doing the things we're not supposed to do. So if we think of these as our sins, then we're gonna move this over here. And we're gonna move this over here really fast and we're gonna take our sins and we're just gonna expose them to Jesus and see what happens. So when we give our sins to God and put our sins in God's hands, can y'all see this? They just completely go away. They don't exist anymore because God has all of the power to wash away and forgive our sins. And we can forgive just as God forgave, which means we can forgive people of their sins and make sure that they don't exist anymore. And as we forgive, look what happens to us too. We're forgiven just like we forgive others. This is what God can do for us when we ask him to forgive us 
and to make us look more like Jesus. He takes all of our sins and they just, they go away. Pretty cool, huh? So this week, as we're learning to look more like Jesus, make sure that you're forgiving people well. And if there's someone in your life right now that you've been angry with or you haven't forgiven, go to them and make it right. And just tell them that you're sorry that you haven't been treating them like Jesus treats you. And that you want God to forgive you and you're thankful that God has forgiven you. So you're going to do the same for them. I love y'all so, so, so much. Um, before we go, I have a quick word to teach y'all. And this is the word of Femi, all right? We learned it on Sunday if you were here. And if not, it's a great word to, to know. And it's spelled A-P-H-I-E-M-I. -E and it's the Greek word used in a lot of the places where Jesus talks about forgiveness. So it doesn't just mean, I forgive you, I'm not upset anymore. It means to completely throw away, to remove, to send off, to f forget, or to remove from thought or your mind. So when we think of this word, it means so much more than just saying the words, I forgive you. It means we're taking what they've done to us and we're completely removing ourselves from it. We're throwing it off, we're casting it away. It's not anything that we think of when we think of them anymore, if we truly forgive them well. So God looks at us the same way, guys. He doesn't see your sin. He doesn't see all the bad things that you've done. He sees Jesus. He sees his son. And so this week, as we go through everything that we're doing, try to just see Jesus in people instead of seeing all the things that they've done wrong. I love you all so much, and we'll see you next week. Bye, guys.